pair of gloves. The blades can be quite sharp, and when you're uncoiling them, sometimes they'll, they'll spring out. I like to put a pair of gloves on, take my blade, and carefully, carefully open that up. Now you'll want to make sure that the teeth are pointed down on this side of the saw here. Sometimes the blades can be flipped inside out, and you want to make sure that the teeth are pointed down on the right hand side. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take the blade and go through the slot on the table. Carefully walk over, and we're going to drape it over the upper wheel. One of the things you want to watch for is make sure that you line up in the track on the side and start lining up to the bottom. You also want to pull out the baffle here. We'll talk about that in just a moment here. And begin lining your blade up over the wheels. You want to pay attention to the entire track of the blade through the guides and through the wheel. You may have to drop the upper wheel to allow sufficient clearance to get the blade on. And that's just done by rotating the top knob here in a counterclockwise motion. Now that I have it lined up, I'm going to just kind of rough position it here over the wheels with my hands. And then I can start putting some tension on the blade. We're just gradually raising the upper wheel up. And this will begin to put some tension on the blade. Now as I get a little tension on the blade, I want to turn it by hand, make sure that there's nothing binding and that there's nothing in the way. Now use caution, don't stick your fingers all the way through. You don't want to touch the mechanism in the back. You just want to touch the very lip of the wheel here. And that looks pretty good. Now I'll bring a little more tension on it and we're going to begin to adjust the tracking. The tracking knob is in the back of the saw and usually I'll position my hand up here and one on the back and I'll, I'll uh, watch the blade right here. And now this looks a little bit uh, far back. What I want to do is walk it forward on the wheel. I'll begin turning the wheel and turning the knob on the back as well to bring the blade forward. And you'll notice that the blade walks forward. I'm going to bring it right off the edge and you can see it come forward and back. That would be too much. It's coming right off the edge of the tire. I'll walk it back slightly. And that seems to be pretty well centered on the tire. It's good on the top, it's good on the bottom. Once you're done adjusting the tracking, tighten this lock knob and that'll stay set. Now that that is uh, adjusted for your tracking, I'm going to put a little more tension on it. And because this is a one inch blade, you're going to want to run the, uh, the tension on the blade pretty high. You notice that there's a tension indicator up here. And for a one inch blade, you want to run that right up at the top. All right, now that my tension is on there, I'm going to check the tension right here. I want about a quarter inch of deflection with moderate pressure with my thumb. That's the best tension indicator around. Now that we've got proper tension, proper tracking, we're ready to adjust the guides. The 14SE has dust collection port right underneath the table here. It also uses a series of baffles to isolate this chamber and to give you the best dust extraction possible. Now to install the baffle here, you'll see that there's no kerf in it. We'll take it, we'll grab it with a set of pliers like this, and we're going to position it right in front of the blade. And we're going to turn the blade by hand and force this in there, and that'll make a, uh, a nice little curve in this piece. We'll get the wheel spinning. And again, use caution not to stick your hand all the way through and feed this piece in. And make sure that your saw is unplugged when doing this. You're going to be turning this by hand. You're going to have your hands inside the cabinets. It's not a time to have the saw plugged in. Now that's set all the way flush inside, you made your first sawdust with a saw. Boy, I'm getting excited. We're getting ready to cut some wood. This dust collection port uses a uh, dust collection chamber right here. It uses this lower baffle, and it uses this side baffle here as well. We'll shut the door. We'll raise that baffle to seal the chamber. Tighten the Allen. Tighten the wing nuts right here. And shut the door. Now that entire area is sealed off, ready to shoot dust out the bottom here. Now we're ready to adjust the guides. We're going to start with the upper guide. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the guide is loose. You're going to loosen all the Allen screws on the guide. And there will be two for the center. And you're going to bring the rear thrust bearing all the way forward and just barely touch the back of the blade. Once that's touching, you're going to bring the side guides forward. And you want to make sure that they're positioned about an eighth of an inch 
behind the gullet or the cutout of the tooth. You don't want to come too far forward. You don't want the tooth to touch the ceramic of the guides. So now that those are about an eighth of an inch or so. I'll level those off. I'll snug up the set screws and then we'll adjust the side guides. So that's snug. We'll level this off by eye and tighten that down. Now to adjust the side guides, I'll pick one side first, bring it up and just touch the blade. And again, I'll loosen it up. I want to touch the blade, but I don't want to deflect the blade at all. Just come up, just touch the blade like that, snug that with your fingers, and give it just a little turn with an Allen wrench. You don't have to crank down on these. Now if the whole guide rotates on you, you can simply rotate it back and make sure that the blade is free. To set the second one, you're going to use a spacer. I like to use a dollar bill or a piece of paper. I'll loosen this one up. I'll come up and use the dollar bill for your spacer. Push the side one in so it just touches the dollar bill. Snug it with an Allen wrench. Remove your spacer. And now that should be set. I'm going to rotate the blade a little bit to make sure that's in good shape. That's no problem. When you install a brand new blade, sometimes it's uh, common to see a few sparks when you first start the saw up. You may see them from the side and you may see them from the back on the inside. That's completely normal. The more you cut, the more those will go away. When you're under heavy load, you may see a few sparks. That's completely normal. Again, you have ceramic against a steel blade. To adjust the, the bottom guides, it's just the same as the top, only in reverse. You're going to bring the entire guide simply forward, making sure that you're about an eighth of an inch or so behind the gullet of the tooth. You'll line that up, even that out, and you want to lock those side guides in. You want to make sure that, that guide is fairly even from front to back there as well. Sometimes you can turn that a little bit. Tighten the set screws with your Allen wrench from the, the uh, kit. Once those are tight, you're going to bring the thrust bearing forward, just touching the back of the blade, and snug down the set screw again. Now that that's set, we're going to adjust the side guides. And again, the side guides will do the same way as we did the top. Make sure that the uh, set screws are loosened. We'll bring the first one in, just touching the blade. And sometimes it's easier to reach through the doorway here. So we'll open the door, coming from the front to adjust this guy. Now we'll put our dollar bill spacer in, and this will space out the uh, side guides. What this does, this gives you the necessary clearance so you don't bind the blade. If you start to rotate the blade by hand after you've set the guides and, it's, and it seems to bind, back off the guides just slightly. Now that that one's set, I'll remove my spacer, give the wheel a quick turn, and we're nearly ready to cut. Now before you put your cover on, you want to check and just make sure that the upper guide post goes up and down smoothly. You should track straight with the blade. If for some reason you find that this is out of adjustment, it can be adjusted through the use of these blocks up here. You want to refer to your owner's manual for these adjustments. Now that our guides are adjusted, it's a good time to uh, put the bolt back in the table. This is one of those little points that we put on here just to make sure that the table stays completely flat. It's also a good time to put the protective covers back on. These shields protect you from the moving blade as you're cutting. And you'll bring this up, slide it in place, snug it down by hand, and just cinch it with the Allen key. One of the things you want to make sure is that this doesn't rotate too far forward. Make sure that it's uh, out of the way. We'll put the bottom one on. And it's just a simple bolt from the outside. And we'll snug that down. Boy, that was easy. Now let's do a few adjustments to make sure that our saw is ready to cut. First thing I want to check is check the throat plate. I'll use a straight edge here. We'll check it to the table. And this one looks good front and rear. If you need to level it, there's four set screws at the corner. It uses a very fine Allen wrench to go through and adjust those. The next thing we'll check is we'll check the blade to the table and make sure that we're 90 degrees square right here. You put a square up against the blade here. This one's a little bit off. 
And the way that we adjust that is back here on the positive stop, there's a nut and a bolt on this one. We'll loosen that and square up the uh, table. Now I'll loosen up the lock nut and I'll sight off of my blade. Make sure you loosen the lock knobs underneath the table. And that's right about on. I'm going to secure that right here. I'll secure the lock nut. Now this is square right here. It's a good time you can check on the back to make sure you're 90 degrees this way as well. And the last thing you want to check is to make sure that your fence is 90 degrees. If this is off, we'll simply loosen the mounting bolts here for the front rail and adjust it up or down so that your fence is square. Now this uh, plate on this side here can be level off of the table as well. You put a straight edge here. Loosen the two nuts that hold it on and raise it up to the same plane as the table and lock it in. We'll check the front. Snug that down. We'll adjust the back. Tighten it up. And that's perfect. We're ready to go. Now we are ready to uh, take our LT16 into the shop. And uh, if you don't have a uh, house jack, you can also use a heavy duty dolly. Once again, you want to inspect for any type of damage to the container if there is any. Again, noted on the shipping slip. Let's open up and have a look at the 16. Now, wow, this looks like it's packaged the same as the uh, LT14 SC that we just did. Yes, it is. So the setup procedure on this is the same? It's the same. So these two come from the same manufacturer. The guide adjustment and the saw setup is the same. The only thing that's different, I guess, would be the stand? Correct. Uh, it will not have a stand, so we don't have to assemble a stand. 